In this video, we'll be talking about a type of machine learning algorithm called k-nearest neighbor. One of the reasons I love k-nearest neighbor is because it's really easy to see visually and pretty easy to understand. Um, so let's get into it. We'll be using the same example as we have in several of our other machine learning videos about trying to classify a mystery fish as a salmon or a tuna based on some properties about it. Here we'll be using the properties of weight and length. So on this grid right here, you see that I have length on the x-axis and weights on the y-axis. And you see that I have these red circles representing tunas and these orange triangles representing salmon. We already see some natural clustering, right? It seems like uh, the tunas have a low length and a high weight and the salmon have a high length and a low weight um, in general. Of course, there's some that are kind of on the border, not sure about, but that's the general trend here. Uh, with k-nearest neighbor, basically how it works, let me show you visually first before we go into the math because that really helps to solidify things. If we have a mystery fish, right? So I'm going to represent that with, I'm going to use gray, good color for mystery. I'm going to use this gray x to represent a mystery fish. If I said, here's a mystery fish with that length and that weight, would you probably say it's a tuna or a salmon? You'd probably say it's a tuna, right? Because it's literally close to other tuna. It's neighbors we're using that word neighbor, its neighbors are other tunas, and it has more distant neighbors that are other salmon. So I'd say it's a tuna. Um, now, a more ambiguous case would be something like if I put a gray X here. It seems like it's kind of on the border, but maybe leaning towards salmon, because these two triangles, these two salmon are really close, whereas there's only one tuna kind of close to it, so a little bit more ambiguous there. Let's assign some mathematical formulation to it to help us uh, make these ideas a little more rigorous, all right? So given a mystery fish, f sub i, it only has two things about it. It has a weight, w sub i, and a length, l sub i. Now, how do we give a mathematical notion of a similarity between this mystery fish and some other fish, f sub j, which maybe we do have data for? For example, if we have this guy, this x as our mystery fish, how do we use data about this tuna to help us make a decision? So how we're going to do that, there's not a set way to do it. That's one of the reasons I like k-nearest neighbor is because you can really make up whatever distance function you want. But we're going to be using the literal distance function in the grid. That is, what's the Euclidean distance, or literally the distance, between that x and some other fish we do know details about. So remember, that is given by our distance formula, which let me write out here. Square root of, we take the difference between their uh, x variables or the lengths. So L sub i minus L sub j. We square it, and we add that to the difference between their weights, W sub i minus W sub j, and we square it. It's all in a square root. So that's basically your Euclidean distance between two points in the plane, and we're using the same idea in this example. So that's going to be our similarity between uh, mystery fish i and known fish j. So if we calculate that uh, distance between mystery fish here and this guy, we're going to find that distance is really small. We find this distance is really small. We find this distance is really small. We can find that distance for every single other fish in here, including all these salmon here, and basically ask who are your three or five closest neighbors. If we use the three closest neighbors, we find out it's this guy, this guy, and this guy probably, right? So since of your three closest neighbors, we figure out how many are salmon and how many are tuna. In this case, they're all tuna, so we assign you as a tuna as well. That's a very logical way to go about it, right? It basically uh, says the idea of you are very similar uh, to people who have similar characteristics to you, right? You have a similar outcome, for example. So that's basically how it works. One caveat, notice I said things like set your number of neighbors k equal to 3 or set it equal to 5. Why did I pick odd numbers? Well, if I picked four, there's always the chance you're going to have two salmon and two tuna, and then you're kind of stuck in the water again. So um, it's, it's nice to pick an odd number so there's never a tie. Of course, if you have multiple classes, not just two, then it gets a little bit more tricky. But with two classes, it's better to pick an odd number, I believe. Okay, so yeah, as we have written in blue here, you pick your k closest neighbors, and you pick the majority. Okay, so that becomes a little more interesting when we consider this X right here, this mystery fish. Let me switch colors so that not overlapping everything. If I have this mystery fish here and I pick K equals three, who are your three closest neighbors? 
seems like it's this salmon, this salmon, and this tuna. So in this case, we have a majority ruling in terms of salmon, so we assign this guy as a salmon. Okay, that's how Canary's neighbor works. Um, before closing out this video, I do want to talk about some possible obstacles you have. Um, here, I didn't do this in a very careful way because weight could be in any type of units, right? It could be in pounds, for example. Length could be in any units. It could be in inches or millimeters or feet or whatever. So if weight is in pounds and length is in inches, and all I'm doing is just this subtraction right here of lengths and subtraction of weights, I'm basically implicitly uh, saying that a one unit different difference in lengths is the same thing as a one unit different in weight. But a one pound difference may not be as drastic or could be more drastic than a one inch difference or a one foot difference. So what you really want to do before you carry out this process is to kind of normalize these variables um, in some way. For example, if I have my distribution of weights of all of my known fish, uh, then what I can do for a new weight is, so I have weight sub i is my new weight, and I want to normalize it, so let me just say prime, is going to be equal to the true value of that weight minus the average, this is a bar, so average of all the weights I have so far, divided by the standard deviation of the weights. You're going to notice this is just a z-score or a normalization, um, subtracting the mean and taking the standard, dividing by standard deviation, okay? You can, of course, do different kinds of standardization, a min-max normalization if you want, but the point is you want to somehow get all your variables on the same scale. Speaking of your variables, here I just have two, but you might have several more. You can go ahead and just include those more terms in your Euclidean norm or whatever norm you want to use as your similarity uh, distance metric. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to k-nearest neighbor, visual representation of how it works. Um, so we'll do some more videos about it in the future with some more considerations. Until next time.